Okay. Uh, my, my name is Justin McCood. I'm a local mortgage guy. And what color is this? White. 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 Say white three times. White. 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 Say white three more times. No, white, 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 white. Say white for about 15 seconds. 15 seconds. What do cows drink? Milk. milk. They drink water, they give milk. <laughs> so my purpose in this today is to illustrate when you get to a, kind of a certain point of thinking, uh, it's very difficult to change that, all right? Uh, not realizing I was going to be speaking in front of a bunch of geeks that already understood the web, I decided to simplify it. All right, uh, we're in the mortgage business in 2000. We all of our business was going up. No matter what we did, we were brilliant. You could ask us, we would tell you how smart we were, and we used the web, not at all. Uh, this is a Boston Consulting Group model, and it tells us, so we all went to business school, that you need to take your money from the cash cow that you have and invest it into your stars. Uh, and in business school, they teach you can solve all the world's problems in a two by two matrix. It's all very simple. Uh, we didn't do that. Because the simple, classic paradigm of, in times of crisis, people revert to the familiar. So whenever there was a problem, we just solved it the same old way that we always had. Now, many people, if you went to the Ignite Phoenix a couple of days ago, you know that architecture caused the financial crisis, which is not entirely true. <laughs> uh, this is uh, a model that was done by a mortgage guy that I replicated slightly. And here's, in the early, uh, in the 1990s and early 2000s, these are the type of people that could qualify for a mortgage, okay? Uh, there was a very select group, and as banks had to make more money, they expanded the guidelines to those mortgage criteria. Um, and so more and more people could actually qualify for a mortgage. And it actually got to the point around 2005 where people, uh, the only people that couldn't qualify for a mortgage were really the people that were really on the outliers of, of society. I mean, if you could fog a mirror and you could sign your name, you were probably getting a mortgage at, at this point in kind of that, that process. Um, and then, um, this is where we really thought we were, we were bright. No matter what we came up with, it would make money. We would have an idea, we would translate it into some kind of a direct mail piece, we would send it out by the boatloads, and it would just turn into money. Uh, and there wasn't really any complexity to it, because remember, if you could fog a mirror, you could get a mortgage. And this is when the financial crisis started to happen. Uh, the banks started tightening their guidelines, and there was no one real event that happened. They just slowly, over time, started tightening. Now all these people on the outside are homeowners, and they can't do anything with their mortgage. And so this is where you hear the terms underwater, or people are upside down, or they're, they can't. So they're, now we're back to what today is just a classic lending situation where really you have to have a job, you have to have money in the bank, you have to have responsible credit, and you can get a mortgage. So here we are down here on this side of the curve, and this is where all the smart, the same people that thought they were so smart now realize we're not the brightest guys in the room anymore. Now we're the dumbest guys. They all, you tell somebody you're a mortgage guy at a party, you're dumb. Uh, so we translated our business to the web. Uh, this is the first attempt that we went to the web, uh, and I, I think I personally was responsible for Google's second quarter profits uh, for the, this year because we spent so much money on pay-per-click uh, that it, it just didn't work because of the way that that works. So we transitioned a little bit to social media. The biggest thing about social media that I've experienced is it, it's a huge time suck uh, in that you can literally get lost in just one or two of these and end up making no money if you're not careful. So we decided to segment our business and these were our strategies. We started by giving. Uh, we realize that authenticity is kind of a core value of what we do on the web, and then you have to find a niche. And if you can use a little bit of innovation in that niche, then it'll turn into profit. Um, so we start by giving. Uh, this was really an interesting model because I've never blogged, I've never been a part of the social media space or anything like that. I'm a mortgage guy, right? On top of that, I used to be smart, so now I'm dumb. So what I did is I went uh, to the different people that are on these sites and started participating in their blogs. Uh, we then went to Twitter, okay? And this is what we learned about uh, social brand or personal branding in the social media space. And many of you are on here somewhere. I'm probably going to get in trouble for borrowing your picture. I apologize for that. But everybody has a brand, whether it's the jump guy or whatever. And you'll know you have a brand and you're on the road to profit if you get identified as, oh, you are that and whatever you want to be guy, okay? Oh, you are that mortgage guy. Oh, you're that jump guy. Oh, you're that real estate guy. Oh, you're whatever you are, you're on your way to that niche. Um, and lastly, you know, as you go broke, it's not funny at the time, but it's really funny later. Uh, <laughs> the sooner you can put the pieces back together and go back to making money. Um, and so, you know, you have to, we, I live by this uh, crisis plus time equals humor because everything in the end. And for all the smart people in the room that did figure this out, I've had this happen before, calves actually do drink milk 
but cows don't drink milk. So, uh, you know, there we go. Thanks.